looking at a forage harvester chopping a crop faster than any machine has ever been able to chop before. This is New Holland's amazing new Model 800 with a capacity of up to 45 tons an hour, higher than any other forage harvester on the market, nearly double the capacity of most machines. This is the kind of capacity that means getting in crops in the fastest possible time. This means saving the highest possible amount of feeding value in your crops. This means valuable time saved for the man who owns one. And the man who owns the Model 800 gets all this great performance when he follows a few easy rules of operation and maintenance. Here are some of them based on the findings of the farmers who tried and tested this machine on their own land. Correct hitching to the tractor is important, especially on a PTO machine. Standard drawbar height is 15 inches above the ground and the end of the tractor PTO shaft should be 14 inches from the center of hitch pin. Good operator control is natural here. These controls can easily be adjusted to suit you. The tongue of the harvester is easily adjustable from side to side. The offset should be kept to a minimum to prevent side draft on the harvester. On a new machine, the belts and chains should be checked after a short operating period. Adjust as recommended in the operator's manual for initial stretch and break-in. After this, check periodically. Loose belts can cause loss of power, reduce capacity, and limit the overall performance of the harvester. For best operation, keep knives sharp at all times. This knife sharpener is standard equipment. Knives can be sharpened in a few minutes by following these simple steps. Remove the sharpener cover and cylinder shield. Loosen the stone carrier handle and adjust the stone manually until it just clears a knife edge. Close the inspection door and run the cutter head at about one half normal operating speed. The stone carrier is now ratcheted down automatically as it strikes the tab at each end of the grinding stroke. The locking handle should be tightened slightly before each pass across the knives. The sharpener should be drawn across the knives at an even speed and ratcheted down one notch at a time for best grinding results. Along with the knives, the shear plate plays an equal role in producing good silage. Here, we see the removable shear bar and plate assembly. The shear plate need not be removed from the bar for grinding. A square cutting edge should be maintained. After the knives have been sharpened, adjust the shear bar to approximately ten thousandths of an inch clearance of the knives at this point. To adjust the shear plate, loosen these two holding bolts slightly and back off these adjusting studs until the correct clearance is obtained. Then re-tighten the holding bolt securely. The length of cut is controlled by two factors. First, the speed of the main apron, and second, the number of knives used on the cutter head. Apron speed is increased by using a smaller sprocket, which gives a longer cut. A larger sprocket makes a shorter cut. To change the number of knives, the knife and knife back assemblies are easily removed by taking out four cap screws at each end of the assembly. 
two, three, or six knives can be used. They must always be equally spaced. Repeated grinding of the knives will increase the clearance between the knives and the cutter headband, resulting in poor delivery from the machine. This is corrected by first backing off the shear bar assembly at these studs. Then loosen the four cap screws in the knife, move the knife outward with these set screws, until they just clear the knife gauge, which is furnished with the harvester. This clearance should be checked at both ends of each knife. After the knives have been adjusted, they should be sharpened, and the shear bar adjusted to them. The main apron tension is adjusted by loosening the cap screws and moving the front apron shaft to the front or rear as needed. Be sure both sides are adjusted evenly. The deflector assembly is easily adjusted from the tractor seat for rear or side delivery and for leveling the load from one side of truck bed to the other. It can also be held in a fixed position with lock on the control stand. To change attachments on the harvester, drop the rear support stand. Tighten these bolts. Release tension on the lift springs. Uncouple lift arms from the attachment. Remove this drive chain. Remove the upper end of pitman and sickle drive belt. Remove the leg support bolts. Then release the four over center clamps. and remove the attachment. Special locating pins direct the attachment into position when mounting and also hold it in exact location after it is attached. The direct cut attachment is simple and easily serviced for maximum performance. Keep guards aligned. Use a sharp knife at all times. Knife head can be kept snug as wear occurs by removing shims at the front and rear wear plates. Table apron tension is adjusted with these tension levers by locking the latch in the desired position. Keep the apron adjusted evenly on both sides. Pitch of the reel teeth is controlled by shifting this reel cam. By moving the cam counterclockwise, the teeth will retract late, which is desirable in short materials. By moving the cam clockwise, the real teeth will retract earlier, which is usually desirable in long and viney type materials. Adjustments on the 8-foot direct cut attachment also apply to this 6-foot direct cut unit. The cutter bar and reel assembly is removed by taking off the upper end of the pitman. Removing the reel drive belt. And taking out two cap screws at each end. And then sliding the direct cut head from the feed table. The pickup attachment uses the same feed table and augers as the six foot direct cut attachment. The drum assembly is guided into position by these locator pin slots 
and secured to the feed table with two cap screws at each end. Teeth on the reel pipes can easily be replaced by removing the cam arm roller and sliding the tooth pipe out the hole in the end plate. Row crop attachments are designed for a minimum of maintenance and servicing. All main drive shafts are equipped with seal bearings. Gathering chains are adjusted simply by loosening these bolts and moving the tightener plate forward or back as needed. Side knives and knife assembly should be kept sharp for best operation. Keep the knife head adjusted at this point so there is not over 1 64th of an inch up and down movement. This is maintained by the removal of shims from the front and rear wear plates. The stock deflector is adjustable back or forward. Its purpose is to push the material tops forward so the stalks will enter the feed rolls in almost a horizontal position. The same adjustments apply to the big capacity two-row crop attachment. Fast, efficient operation in the field from a harvester well-serviced demands the same efficiency in unloading at the silo. Here you see the new Holland Model 330 spreader equipped with a forage box unloading into a new Holland Model 22 conveyor type blower. The new Holland Model 21 hopper blower is a simplified unit, very suitable for use with unloading units equipped with cross conveyors. Because of its simplicity, it requires a minimum of service. To ensure another successful season next year, you'll want to check over your harvester for any needed service before storing. In this way, service can be handled during the winter months, and you will be ready to go when the next cutting season approaches. If you need additional help at any time in the servicing or maintenance of your harvester, your authorized New Holland dealer is ready and willing to assist you at any time. His servicemen have been factory trained to give you help with any problems. And here's the end result. Fast, smooth, easy chopping in any crop. Getting in the crop in as little as half the usual time making a better crop by beating the weather, harvesting at the best time. That's the new Model 800, New Holland's newest contribution to modern grassland farming methods.